Denmark had fallen to the German Reich in a little under six hours, one of the quickest conquests in human history. Now we come to the final of the historical focus trees. Denmark. That's it. That's all there is. That's all Denmark deserves for being in the war for a whopping six hours. Two of which officially. Four of those because they couldn't get everybody to stop fighting in time. Two focuses. Uh, they're neutral and then they die. Unfortunately, no, that is not the case. But let's um, scroll down here. You can read this if you want to, but I'll give you the quick notes for it. Denmark got their asses handed to them by Prussia in a war in the 19th century. Ever since, Denmark decided it's not worth trying to fight Germany or anyone else for that matter. Because one, the British won't help them and they clearly stated that we will not help you. And two, none of the other Nordics could agree on a mutual mutual defense pact because everybody thought someone else was the enemy, uh, mainly the Finns were not too happy about the uh, Soviets and the Russians. The Danes were very scared of the Germans and Sweden just didn't want to play along, I guess. Anyway, long story short, Denmark decided it's not worth spending money on an army that is never going to win a war anyway, so we're gonna funnel all our money into the social welfare state. As a result, that is where the foundation of modern social welfare in Denmark lies and that is why Denmark has or had virtually no army and why they were overrun so quickly. There. On to the good bits, the map. Usually they put this at the end, they decided to lead with it now. Uh, the Danish provinces got a little change up. Okay then, and Germany is getting an extra state. I think they've cut up Schleswig-Holstein in two, and then Sundergiland, Nordgiland, uh, if I'm seeing this correctly. Um, they've gone with localization. I, I kind of like that, so uh, anyway, yeah, small thing, but I like it. I like it. Also some changes to the sea lanes, the Danish belts have gotten a bit of a change here, so I'm going to assume it will be, whoops, it will be more important in terms of controlling the Baltic than it already was, because the, currently the straight crossing is like up there near the tip of Jutland, and it looks like the sea lane here is more around the Danish belts, I'm curious to find out. And at the game start, we still have Santa Claus, Thorvald, Stoning is still in charge, passing Christmas joy to all. But it looks like we will have to start the game with three additional spirits. And from the look of them already, they don't look good. <laughs> it's never good. Also, uh, yeah, we're gonna start as a disarmed nation instead of just being on the low end of the mobilization laws or the uh, recruitment laws. You're gonna start at the absolute lowest. It looks like they have also put in some new icons here. So these are the industrial companies we know and love. And these probably tie in with the new military things, Mabob. I keep forgetting the word they use. Let's take a look at these horrible national spirits. So, neglected military. Yeah, about accurate. Yep. Economic crisis. Of course it is an economic crisis. Yep. And the Danish industrial capabilities, or rather the lack of Danish industrial capabilities. Great, great. Doesn't look like Denmark's gonna be doing much as they did historically. <laughs> oh, these are bad. These are bad. And then we come to the balance of power. Not my favorite, but let's just see what they deliver here. It looks like Denmark will be balancing on a knife's edge between welfare spending on one hand and military spending on the other. You will have to pick and choose what you want. I'm gonna assume that early game is probably going to be best depending on what you want to do, but probably going to be best to lean into that welfare spending, build your sifts faster, get infrastructure bonus, that kind of stuff. And then as the war progresses, gets closer to your front door, lean into that military spending, get more mills, get your mills pumping out more equipment faster. So it's it's probably something you will actually have to manage actively, unlike other nations where just move the bar one way and keep it there. I, I hope it's something like that instead of just something annoying. Because uh, it does look like this. This is an example of the welfare spending. If you move the bar all the way to one side, more monthly population, that's not really that impressive. More research speed, great. Infrastructure speed, great. Civ speed and railway speed. These are all good. These are actually relatively, well, no, very impactful if you're trying to build up that economic base. However, you can tell by the penalties, they're expensive. It will mean you produce less equipment. You will produce a lot less equipment. Not just your cap is lowered, but your efficiency growth and your production efficiency 
base is lowered. So you produce a significant amount less. Also, training time is increased. So you, the few divisions that you can train take longer and the mills take longer to build. So this is probably something you want to swing to one side and then back as your focus shifts. Because looking at the other end of the spectrum, maximum military spending, these are all good except for railway construction speed, infrastructure and sifts. Basically, it flips the other effect on its head. And, and I think this is the one you want once you have your civilian base. Because usually you, you spend the early game building a couple of sieves and then leaning heavily into mills, especially if you're a smaller country. You don't spend three years building civilian factories. You, you maybe build one, two, maybe three, and then you shift into that military production. So I'm thinking that is something Denmark might want to do. Use the early bonus to build a couple of quick-ish sieves and then lean heavily into the military side of things so you can try to get ready for the juggernaut coming from the south. Speculation, of course, but it's what I would do. It also looks like Denmark will have a whole host of corgis to choose from. I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce many of these names, but it looks like, yep, Denmark will have its share of advisors. Uh, probably locked uh, to ideology, maybe. Um, but, 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 many of these will also affect the balance of power directly based on what they were historically proponents of. Let's see here. They got a, a good example here of a Peter Munch. Let's call him Peter Munch. <clears throat> this guy will move everything towards the welfare side. If you fire him, of course, everything moves back to the warfare side. But this guy is clearly in favor of the welfare policies. He will support those by making things better for your early economic growth. Consumer goods reduced, more stability, cheaper trade laws, etc. And then if you're looking for a war hawk here like this uh, Christmas Miller... The Corgi straight up bonuses to everything military related. War support, recruitable pop, sieve to mill conversion, conscription laws. And of course, it moves the balance of power one way. So I'm thinking as Denmark, you're going to want to sit on a lot of political power, at least if you're playing historically, sit on a lot of political power to quickly shift the balance of power left and then back to the right. It's an interesting approach. I like this more than what they've done in the previous um, DLC where balance of powers was really something you move one way and keep it there or you just ignored because you took a certain path. So if we're going to have to use it, I, I like like this approach a little bit more. Now they're talking about politics here. Um, base game democracies and other nations uh, with similar ideologies get a four year election cycle. Denmark's going to be an exception to that because Danish law is weird and funny, much like the Danish people. Uh, they get a three year cycle. Every three years, you can choose a different country leader based on certain stats, mostly like political party popularity. However, you can also force elections if uh, you use these decisions. Uh, first, you criticize someone one and then you can issue a motion of no confidence essentially you can force elections so this will give denmark the option to relatively quickly shift leaders and shift party popularity and and turn into something uh, maybe you can go communist maybe you can go fascist or a different flavor of democracy depending on what the world needs let's scroll back up this is all part of there we go. The balance of power. First, you criticize your current country leader, and then you can issue a motion of no confidence. And while this is probably relatively quickly, ah, still a lot of political power you'll be spending. I'm not sure I'm actually going to be using that all that much. I'll be honest. Uh, looks decent-ish. I'm not super interested, if I'm honest. So, yeah. There we go. We vote of no confidence. Call for a snap election. You get a new election. And then you can uh, lean into certain directions, depending on what you want moving forward. Of course, now we come to the meat and potatoes. The glorious focus tree for Denmark. Like, this, this thing is huge for a country that spent six hours... Six hours in the war. This is a pretty big and hefty chonker. So, whoo, ho baby. And it all starts with the glorious industrial branch. And the first choice you already have to make is sign the, I don't know how to pronounce that, can't. 
Kanzler Gada for look sign paper build bunker that's your first choice does lock you into certain things y you can tell from the get-go you will have to choose do I want an economy and happy people or do I want bunkers and guns and that's your choice the first choice you already have to make if you're going for industry now further down there more of this is is linked so you're not locked out of the the, the later focuses but like the first couple here depending on what these give you're immediately immediately locked out. Uh, I don't think building forts is all that valuable, so you're probably going to lean into the... Um I'm guessing these are Civ bonuses, unless, of course, like these first couple of focuses really affect the balance of power by much. So we'll have to see more of Denmark to, to really figure it out, but it, it does give you choices, hard choices. So there we go. This is the sign the paper, uh, 35 days, and it really much moves you toward uh, towards the welfare side of things, gives you boost for democracy support and unlocks some advisors. It is definitely going to be locking you in one way. But the path will provide civilian factories and building slots and a nice national spirit called Danish produce. So they make stuff. Bacon and dairy, apparently. Good bonuses, honestly. These are decent. Supply consumption's huge. Attrition, eh, okay. Supply efficiency's nice. Like, these are all good bonuses. So I'm thinking building bunkers is going to have a very strong bonus if I'm even going to consider it. It might, considering it unlocks certain advisors, and advisors are going to be big if you're going to ever move that balance of power quickly. Hmm. Plus, it gives you improved logistics. This is also pretty good. Supply hub construction speed's nice, though I doubt I'll build many hubs as Denmark. Ports are cheaper, and my country's not that big anyway. Supply efficiency. Efficiency, supply, like all of both of those are really good. It's going to be a difficult choice. I'll have to play a couple of games to figure it out. Of course, we're going to devalue the kroner. For people wondering, it says consumer goods factories factor minus 10%. This does not mean 10% consumer goods are now going to be deducted from your civilian factories. This is new. This is a new modifier, much like how you have recruitable pop percentage and recruitable pop factor. It's, it's not as harsh as it looks but they will describe it a little more in detail in a future dev diary. But in short, they are going to introduce a new, slightly more granular way of deciding how many factories are devoted to consumer goods to keep things a little less nonsensical and to avoid having countries have 0% consumer goods, I'm guessing. And it does look like trading with uh, either Germany or the UK is mutually beneficial. You get a factory. Cool. You also get uh, a nice bonus to your consumer goods factor. Cool. And and uh, daily support for non-aligned goes down. It's going to depend on what you want to do, of course, if this is good or not. But the UK also gets that Danish produce, the, the bonus that you get way at the start. The UK gets a version of that as well, and it will remain until you go to war with that country, which is really cool. This is this might make Denmark, and, and I can't believe I'm saying this, this might make Denmark a valuable member of the Allies. Not by much, though. Oh, look, you can get Niels Bohr, for those of you who don't know. Very smart man. Nuclear research speed. <sighs> The Institute for Theoric Physik. Like, cool, cool research slot. Great. <laughs> Nuclear tech doesn't appeal to me at all. The game's over before that's relevant. You'll also be able to develop your remote regions if you continue down that tree. So the Greenlands, the Faroe Islands and Bornholm. Okay, okay. It might make Denmark decent. Pretty decent. Plus the ability to either create or improve a con an industrial concern. I, yeah. Okay, so this is looking very compelling. Look at the stuff you can claw out of the ground in Greenland. That is a lot of stuff. That is aluminum you can get out, you, or aluminium, steel, tungsten, chromium. Essentially, what they're going to try and make uh, with the industrial branch is to make it flexible. So no matter what, well, no, depending on what your goals are and what the world looks like, you will have options. I like options. Now, let's continue to the more important branch, and <clears throat> this should really be in the non-historical paths, the Danish military branch. It looks like we are, uh, again, treated to the very similar uh, navy, army, air split here, but let's quickly talk about them. So, at the top, basics. Uh, basically, get everything in order. That is the top here. That is get, try and get stuff in order. And then it splits off into a military branch on the right, navy branch down the center, and air branch on 
the left. Now, these look very impressive in terms of the Navy branch because I am seeing some cool things like modernizing the Navy or refitting old ships. If it's anything like the Finnish focuses, that could give you a nice Navy real quick. Uh, let's see what the bonuses actually are, though, because uh, if they're all 70 days, I'm not interested. Oh, great. We can start with a 70 day one. Yay. Now, it does look like uh, the military path here. This branch is how we're going to degrade the neglected military spirit. Then we've got the army branch starting with the hey, hey, ha. High Heron reorganization. It does look like this is more defense oriented and industrial oriented in that there's bonuses to your military industrial organ MIOs, military industrial organizations here. Damn, I knew I remembered it. Defensive bonuses and bonuses to your military industry. That's more of the things you'll find here, along with the usual bonuses to research. Uh, not a whole lot of free factories, uh, but it's it's something. It's something, and it's a nice start. It also gives you more well alleviates more of the terribleness that neglected military gives you so eh, okay and we can choose to invest in one of two mios herens technis Corps and Dansk Industry Syndicate. I don't speak Danish. None of this makes any sense to me. But yeah, uh, do I want infantry bonuses? Do I want artillery bonuses? Essentially, really cool that Denmark will have the ability to build a military industry that it won't use. And it does look like we get more fun stuff with here. <laughs> I, I don't know how to pronounce any of this. I feel like such an idiot. Anyway, this will allow you to set up the home guard, uh, probably divisions that will pop up via decision. Plus, of course, the usual bonuses that pop in. And it gives you the Heeren um, National Spirit, which will, in this case, grant you division defense on core territory. And the Heeren Spirit is something that you build up all the way through that tree. It's a national spirit. So you kind of make Denmark a little bit better. And these are those decisions. Deploy the home guard. Well, I actually assumed it it would just add units. Looks like it doesn't. It just gives you like a mod of... I'm a little disappointed in this. I would assume it like gave you militia units in that state. Instead, it gives you bonuses in that state. They're nice bonuses, but I'd rather get the troops. Ah, well, better than nothing, I guess. I don't think I'll be using this much. Maybe just to hold the bottleneck in the south. If you go through the focus tree and you suffer through it, you might end up with a very powerful here in national spirit, extra speed, extra orc, like all around a good army because Denmark ruled Scandinavia before and it shall do so again. Well, maybe in its dreams. Maybe it can dream. But this does look like something nice to strive for. And with these bonuses, you might actually be able to hold off Germany on historical. Maybe. I think I can. Of course, Denmark is a Baltic country and they love their ships. This is a slightly shorter tree, but again, it comes with its bonuses and its choices. The first choice will be to either refit old ships. So this gives you, again, one MIO and a couple of related bonuses. Plus, it gives you the option to, um, to use decisions that turn convoys into military ships or buy old ships from the great powers. This is essentially unlocking the same things Finland got in its dev diary, uh, a decision that turns convoys into actual ships in production uh, to buy ships from everybody else. This is good if you want a quick navy, just uh, uh, snap your fingers and you got a ramshackle navy. Plus the extra refitting speed might mean you're able to actually modernize what you have and turn your navy into something small but powerful. It looks very much like what Finland got. And the ships you get Probably not fantastic, but considering they're cheap, why not? And this is the other side of that coin, modernizing the Navy. This gives you bonuses to a different MIO, uh, more related to dockyard output, and it gives you modern-ish ships. In this case, a coastal defense ship. It's like a really shitty battleship. Uh, early destroyer or destroyer and bonuses to, uh, in this case, light cruisers, as far as I can tell. What's nice about this, other than the bonuses you see here, it will put ships in your production line. Uh, they are a certain percentage complete. You just need to finish them up. But depending on what tech you've got researched, the ship will be better. So for that destroyer, for instance, this is if you have just the basic stuff unlocked. However, if you have a little bit more research done, this is the ship you can get. So depending on your research, you can get a slightly better ship almost for free. Well, at a greatly reduced cost, let's say. So this is another option for Denmark to build its navy. Looking at the ships, they're not terrible. It's better to have some ships than to have no ships. 
ships, right? And then towards the end, we must choose between Baltic Sea Domination, which looks decent. It's more focused on screens and destroyers, cruisers, that sort of thing. And on the other side of the coin, we have the North Sea Ambitions. And this one's cool. Not only does it give you bonuses, uh, these are nice, uh, ship recovery rate, naval AA, blah, blah, blah. But depending on what you did earlier, so if you either chose to refit old ships or to modernize the Navy, you will get different effects. Either you will get a converted liner carrier, so a really shitty carrier, but it's cheap in the production queue. I think you get two actually in the production queue. Or if you went with a modernized Navy, they will add a carrier variant of the 1936 carrier hull in the production queue. They unlock the technology for you and they give you more bonuses to cruisers. Overall, I love that. Like choices made early on in the tree come back to haunt you or reward you later down the tree. This rewards you with being consistent. Oh, also Marines. So yeah, whoa, bonus to Marines, great. Woohoo. Well, Denmark might naval invade a lot. They are pretty surrounded by water, I guess. So yeah, this is the converted liner. Not terrible, not great. This is the 36 carrier. I'd say my heart goes out to the 36 carrier because of its increased deck size. But I do like the range on the converted uh, liner. No, no, the carrier. The carrier will always win. And if you finished off that focus and you've gone for the North Sea, this also unlocks another... <laughs> one focus unlocks another. So this one leads back to the air branch, actually. So kind of skipping ahead, but going for the carrier stuff unlocks bonuses to naval bombers. They nicely tie those together. So this is cool. This is cool. And much like the army, the Navy too can reclaim some of its glory. If you've gone down the tree and made the correct choices or the choices you like, you can have a very powerful national spirit to really help you get along here. And I like these numbers. They're not game changing, but they will definitely strengthen Denmark. It's going to need a lot of strengthening. And this too also changes. This is what you get if you've gone for the Baltic Sea. This is what you get if you've gone for the North Sea. So the changes are slight, but very, very precise. So it's really going to depend on what you want out of your game. I would probably go with North Sea every time though. Probably. I'm ambitious. Now for the Air Force, again, it follows the very same principles as the previous trees. So make some choices, get different outcomes, pick up some bonuses along the way. And the first one is really the interesting one. Either we go with domestic designs, again, improves an MIO, gives you a couple of free cheap-ish designs, put them in production and a free military factory. Woohoo, fantastic. Okay, that's cool. The designs aren't, eh, they're not fantastic, but if if, the, if you get them for free, you don't have to spend so much time researching and you can start producing these relatively early. That's okay. What I like though is foreign designs. This gives you, of course, the same bonuses to some MIO. Cool, fantastic. Fantastic. Research bonuses, yay. But it also gives you an equipment subsidy. Now, this is something slightly more complex. Essentially, it makes it cheaper for you to buy planes, in this case, fighters and CAS, specifically fighters and CAS, to buy those from either the Netherlands, the UK, or Germany or Sweden. Not only that, but if you're selling to those countries instead, it makes it even more profitable. So I'm thinking if you want to play Denmark as a, let's say, welfare state, this might be an easy way to get some military stuff without having to lean heavily into the military production side of things early. You can trade civs for that stuff relatively cheap and you will have the civs to trade. So you can build up your stockpile while leaning into the industry until you change things around towards the end. I, I think that would be a very cool way of doing things. Also, these subsidies are very specific to CAS and fighters, but there are other ones for trucks, tanks, infantry equipment, etc. So further down the tree, you will find, well, not this tree, but further down these respective trees for the army, you'll also find cool stuff. Again, I'm not going to touch too much on the air tree. It's very similar to the other tree. It boosts MIOs for air. It gives you bonuses. It gives you a national spirit that gets better. You'll have to choose, of course, do we want a national spirit that improves fighters, cast, or bombers? I'm probably going to be improving either fighters or cast, but yeah, the that will be the choice. This is what you get if you went for the uh, fighters, for instance. I mean, these are pretty good, like agility 10%, ace generation, eh, nice. And then after all that, we get to the political branch. You're only going to look at the historical side of things. So um, <clears throat> we will be leaning into the policy 
of disarmament. Yay! Everything starts with declaring ourselves neutral and then politically union. United? United! And it will probably all lean heavily towards building up the industry. Uh, one way or the other. And some of the bonuses seem nice, like this is full employment, one of the uh, later focuses in the tree. I guess this is nice, but... I'll be honest, look, let's take a look at this tree. I'm not feeling particularly excited about what I see, mostly because one, I'm not Danish and I don't know anything about Denmark and nothing really stirs up sentiment here. And two, it looks very long, very branched, and I'm afraid all of these are gonna be long focuses. But we'll see further down here, shall we? And one of the first things you do is um, declare neutrality again. <sighs> And of course, it gives you some shitty bonuses. Well, penalties, I guess. But it gives you one unique thing. One unique thing. Can you read that? Can, can you? Denmark will get the option to become a puppet of an invading country, but keep its current government form. What does that mean? Well, if you've done that focus, uh, let's go back up here, reaffirm neutrality. If you've done that focus and you're a good boy, you get a choice at the start of the invasion. Do you want to bend over and take it up the rear? Or do you fight for your honor and your people? Of course, historically, you give up and bend over. But Denmark, I think, is the only country in the game that even gets that option. Cool, I guess. And it turns you into Reichsprotektorat Denmark. Yeah. Another terrible national spirit probably to be added. And it flips the balance of power again, but more on that later. Yay. And this gives you a different focus tree again, uh, all the way over here on the right. This is all work in progress. Don't read too much into it. But this is pretty much the occupation focus tree. If you've chosen to be that puppet and you are occupied, you will have, I guess, some ways to get out of it and build your strength while you're a puppet. And you will align with foreign powers to do so. So you, you, you reach out for support. You become German Denmark and you reach out to people like Finland, uh, no, not Finland, like Sweden and the UK, etc. Eh, create the Dan Force. You try to find the host nation where you can start training some covert troops because you're not technically allowed to have a big army, so you have to do it covertly. Fun fact, um, most of this happened in Sweden historically, so cool. Also, national spirit to give you a fighting chance against Germany when you finally do take up arms. Uh, like, this tree is very much focused on first bending over and and then sneakily building up strength until you're ready to strike back, which probably is around the time of the D-Day landings. You wanna, you wanna go in there and have a have a stab at Germany. I'm guessing it also changes the balance of power, and I think this also lifts the veil on what some of the non-historical paths could be. On the one hand, we have autonomy all the way to the right, and on the left, we have well, the opposite of autonomy, I guess, uh, subservience, maybe. So depending on if you're autonomous or not, you will have certain bonuses or penalties, and you'll have to use political power to move it around. I wish I could talk more about this, but the fact that it's not actually included in this dev diary tells me this is 100% going to be part of the non-historical paths. And I am 100% convinced there is going to be a tree here for a Denmark that is going to turn fascist and collaborate heavily. I could be wrong though. So let me know what you think in the comments. Should Denmark get a focus tree before Belgium? Should Denmark even get a focus tree at all considering they fought the war for all of six hours? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you'll enjoy the next one as well. See ya.